Good evening. Good evening, everybody. So, sorry about this technical incident. Uh, it took us uh, 10 minutes to, to get back on. Well, that's part of the digital area uh, when it works, uh, and sometimes it doesn't work. So, so we're going to start this webinar with uh, talking about talking about our employees uh, who now for 18 months uh, have been through this very difficult period with great courage, with great bravery and foresight. And thank you to all of them for their contribution to these great results to our customers too who have been loyal to us, patient with us. Um, we haven't been able to deliver the normal level of service, uh, longer delivery times, increases in price. So sorry to all of you, uh, but thank you for your loyalty. So we'd also like to thank our suppliers who've worked with us through this these difficulties with high levels of orders, uh, shortage of materials, price rises. So thank you to our suppliers and their teams uh, during this difficult period. A particular message for our biggest uh, supplier, Kalefi, who are regularly on, a, on the webinar with us. So thank you to you. And and most particularly the development of uh, Thermador, the subsidiary uh, Thermador. So a lot of messages also from our shareholders, uh, lots of congratulations for our, our results from them. So thank you to them for those messages, for their loyalty. Uh, we haven't seen them. We didn't see them in 2020. We haven't seen them yet in 2021, but we hope maybe we'll be able to see you uh, before the end of the year. So, let's talk about business. Let's get down to business. So, in a summary format, you've already received the figures in the letters to the shareholders per, per, per subsidiary. So, our, the table here shows the two main uh, areas, retail and professional. And when we compare uh, business this year compared to 2019, we've got the same level of growth uh, for the two sectors, 30%. It's quite exceptional in terms of performance. So that's the key important fact that now you've had in your, you've uh, received the letter, so you know that you've known that for a few days, for a few days. Now, we're going to look over a longer period, and you'll see the progression uh, to constant scope of the group per quarter since 2017. So again, we see that in the last two uh, quarters, growth has been exceptional, even though last year, of course, was a low reference because of the pandemic last year. But even taking into account the, 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 the drop last year, we still got remarkable growth figures. I would also ask you to look at what we've done during the second quarter of 2020 and the second quarter of 2021 and you'll see that those the period has been a period of growth and that's why we're a little cautious about uh, this um, very we're working off a very high base so we're cautious about uh, any future forecasts so the milestones for the beginning of this year. Of course, energy renovation is a big theme for buildings and the uh, aid from public authorities in the form of the Ma Prime Rinov. And uh, mechanisms like the uh, energy savings certificates and all of these measures have made available to those who want to renovate their buildings uh, a phenomenal amount of money. And of course, that uh, promotes our subsidiaries who, who sell to these sort of sectors, particularly in construction. And of course, in particular, Thermador, the uh, longest standing subsidiary, who is a major uh, supplier of uh, accessories for systems such as uh, heat pumps and solid fuel boilers and uh, uh, solar panels. So you'll see in the detailed tables that we, we sent you 
them to see spectacular growth in turnover, 15 million in the space of two years, uh, which is a first for, for Thermidor. We also, another important milestone, which we'll see on the graphs a bit later, a slowdown in retail, in the retail activity after several frenetic months uh, we expected this slowdown because it corresponds to the end of the, the third lockdown. And you'll see that in the figures for May and June. Price of containers, uh, that's how we ship uh, goods from um, Asia on uh, massive uh, cargo boats. And they're very, very high. The costs are very, very high at the moment. They, they went up very, very much at the beginning of the year, and we thought maybe it would drop a little bit. No, they didn't drop at all. And so we've had to pass on those price increases to our uh, customers. And they're also explained by the price of raw materials, which also have gone up along with the container prices. Also, our customers, some of our customers have been making precautionary uh, purchases. Those who have got the space and the money have taken a few uh, precautions in terms of stocks because they imagined uh, a particular sort of year with uh, price rises and shortages, of course. And we calculate that at about one month's worth of turnover. Uh, if we can move on to the next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. So, moving to the right, uh, we've got the drop in stock levels. We talked about that in December uh, when stocks were very low and our stocks have continued to, continue to fall. In, in, indeed, it's the corollary of the, the increase in turnover, of course, with more sales, less stock. And so far, we haven't been able to to offset this uh, increase in turnover with an increase, a sufficient increase in stocks. If we move on to the next uh, slide to look at the FNAS and Bricker brief figures, FNAS, they represent sanitation, heating, air conditioning uh, distributors, and you see their monthly figures uh, since March uh, 2020, which is the beginning of the health crisis. And for FNAS, the progressions is the Growth since the beginning of the year has been very uh, substantial, 39% since the beginning of the year, you see at the top. And these most recent months remain very uh, dynamic too, very buoyant. However, for Bricker Brief, as we've seen months of very high growth, massive growth in March, April, uh, and then we see the slowdown at the end there, minus 4, minus 8%. So if we speak about new housing now, this uh, new housing growth uh, curve, we, it's over a very long period, starts in 2012, as you see. And so you're getting, you're getting quite familiar with this uh, chart. We see it's cyclical. Uh, since the beginning of this year, we felt that the, uh, the curve would uh, reach a low point uh, this this year, and we've seen that's happened uh, in May, and but from May onwards, we've seen a, a sharp increase of per building permit applications and new building starts. Can you talk to us a little bit, Patricia, about these results, these great results? So these are results, obviously not my results, but the results of the group. So it's all this uh, growth with uh, renovation, uh, DIY and so, so forth has given us uh, growth in turnover, 40%, as you see. Our operating income has increased also substantially more than 76, 67%, sorry. So it's higher than our turnover. Why has that happened? If we look at the operating margin, it's relatively stable compared to last year. So, so how can we explain this excellent uh, operating 
operating Et income. Well, if you look at, at our structural costs, we've got uh, a lot of fixed costs like rents and other costs. And of course, uh, they've, they've grown, of course, less than the growth in turnover. So mechanically, uh, this improves our operating income. So in terms of personnel charges, which represents, of course, a, a major part of the uh, profit loss account. We've had just 20 new employees since the beginning of the year. And so the, the, the charges linked to personnel have increased, but not as much, again, as the uh, 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 general turnover. Net profit has increased by 71%, greater than operating margin, and that is simply because there has been a reduction in France in uh, corporation tax, and we're now at 26.5% compared to 28% last year. So mechanically speaking, we've got less uh, tax, a less lesser tax bur burden, and so uh, higher net profit. So in terms of our financial situation, I'm going to talk to you about a slightly contrasted situation. We've got good results in terms of cash, in terms of equity, and the stability of our financial structure, but at the same time, our problem, of course, is the level of stock. And we talked about that at the end of December. We emphasized this problem. We felt it was low at the time. And once again, at the end of June, uh, it's still low. So our subsidiaries have obviously purchased, but with the increase in, in turnover, uh, we haven't been able to absorb that uh, gap in terms of stock levels, and we're not at a normal level of stock. I think Guillaume was saying that our stock level represents 142 days of purchases. That may sound a lot to you, but for us, we think we should be higher than that. And so we have to continue to purchase from our suppliers and our logistics teams will have to be, will be working hard in terms of reception. Financial debt has reduced. Uh, that's quite normal because we continue to reimburse our loans and we haven't taken out any new loans because there's been no acquisitions to be financed uh, this year. So, of course, uh, there's been no external growth, so that explains the debt position. Cash plus 37.4 million, which is a high level, to end of June. We've paid dividends. We paid dividends in, in April for about 16.7 million. And we brought additional cash because of this increase to business. Uh, but we've continued to pay, respect the same payment terms to our suppliers and respect uh, the group's uh, principles in terms of supplier, respecting our suppliers. So, next uh, slide. So, that uh, cash, cash, uh, cash position of 37% allowed us to finance um, uh, operations, investment operations, on 4 million euros in property for our subsidiary ILO in order to be able to complete the construction of their logistics site. And we have also started the construction project for FG Inox. There's also a quite a big investment in terms of IT, uh, because we've uh, funded the new supply uh, sourcing uh, software. And so that's, that's now in, in progress. It should be a, probably slow down a bit in the second half for the IT project, but uh, it, it will continue to be a, uh, an investment item. In the other items, we've got our trade receivables, which have increased for the half year. That's connected to our turnover growth. But we've also uh, noted a slight drop in 
uh, customer payment periods, so slightly shorter payment periods. We've also made a detailed review of customer risk to see whether we had any special risks around customers. The other question is supplier debt, and that's an important part of our, of our balance sheet. It should be set against our high levels of purchase in May and June. And that's, of course, linked to our desire to build up st uh, stocks again. Whilst respecting our payment periods to our suppliers. Also, there was the uh, purchase of free shares. Oh, sorry, free shares, excuse me, if Treasury shares. Uh, that's the uh, to do with the resolution that was voted at the annual general meeting. And we've got a distribution of free shares to employees of uh, AILO and uh, Exceler which we consider to be our startup subsidiaries. They've been with us, we've been here for a while, but uh, we still think of them as startups. So this uh, uh, treasury share uh, action means that we can continue to uh, work on that in the second half of 2021. So let's talk about prospects now. Uh, new housing, I talked about that earlier on. We see uh, great promise there. Also, uh, in positive signals from the public authorities, the Prime Minister announced a first uh, budget of 1 billion euros to finance new house uh, builds. There's also a committee uh, uh, chaired by Francois Rebsamen, which this committee is looking into the idea of redeveloping uh, sustainable new uh, constructions in France. And these decisions will be uh, presented in September. Some ideas have already been put forward in uh, July. And this uh, study will be presented to the government in September. And I think it's a really positive thing for us. The public authorities are obviously taking this uh, subject very seriously to re-inject uh, uh, buoyancy into this sector. Energy renovation, again, uh, the public authorities uh, have made a long-term commitment because funding is there for, for a long time on the one hand, and also uh, we see uh, a desire amongst uh, f uh, citizens to make an effort for the for the, for the planet, and so this policy is uh, supported by the, the people as well. So we're very confident about that in the future. Internationally, uh, soon we're going to be able to obviously our salespeople are going to be able to travel again, uh, and. That will means we'll be able to, to get in, in contact with our international customers again, which, of course, is part of, uh, has been a source in the past of um, major export growth, as we've seen in the past with uh, Saivco. So what about the future of the group and the projects in the group, in the subsidiaries? So we talked about AILO with the... Uh, new logistics uh, unit. We're going to continue in the second half with Axelair. Uh, before the end of the year, we'll be uh, delivering the commissioning the new offices and logistics unit. And we're going to start the building of the Axelair offices. Then in the other projects, Dipra Rousseau. Those are new, our two subsidiaries who work in the retail sector and they have Lor Empereur in charge there and there's a project of merger between those two companies, Dipra and also, we've already talked about them in the past and now we're working on IT projects because the two uh, entities uh, are currently uh, undergoing the migration of the ERP uh, system in the, uh, that the group uses. That's the first operation. 
and in sales and marketing communication there's a major task uh, to be undertaken which is has the objective of finding a new uh, name for this uh, new entity and this new team and the third subject will be that, of course that there'll be a legal uh, merging between the two between the two entities and that will, we've been making progress that on that in the second half of the year FG Enots, we talk about them we talked about them earlier that's a subsidiary working in uh, industrial valve sector everything in, made of uh, stainless steel as its name suggests and this uh, subsidiary will be joining us here in Sankon Saint-Quentin Falavier in the first half of 2022 and we, we've got the construction of a new logistics warehouse uh, 12 meters high and 7,500 square meters and we're looking at a, a project delivery in middle of December 2021 with an adaptation uh, with new means of storage uh, with a, uh, an automa automated system and it's called Savoie it's a French uh, company who's designed and delivering that and they're working the FG you know, is working with the Thermola Group's supply chain uh, team and of course with the IT system which will be communicating directly with our ERP with the group's ERP and so uh, we are expecting uh, productivity gains but of course we're going to have to work very hard on that on both sides anything else to say on FG Inox? no I think not for the moment that only concerns the logistics part of FG Inox. Uh, their offices with their purchasing admin and HR team will be staying in Brigny the fourth uh, project concerns PB tube and Thermocomb. Thermocomb joined us in May 2020. So Eric uh, Mancion is at the head of uh, PB tube and Florent Kiefer at the head of Thermocomb. Uh, they're working on synergies between the two subsidiaries. So in terms of purchasing with uh, um, uh, supplies that they have in, in common. Uh, and the, in particular the construction of heating and cooling uh, services and there's going to be storage opportunities in PB tubes uh, uh, logistics uh, uh, areas sales as well there'll be a sharing of intelligence uh, between the two subsidiaries so there's a lot of field work uh, to come uh, in there so those are our structuring uh, projects There's another project which is for the future which is our project to reduce co2 emissions so we've started with four of our subsidiaries uh, pg tube Severaco, jetly and thermidor with a, an agency called iCare it's a consulting agency and they're going to be assessing what our CO2 emissions are uh, in connection with the products that we sell so this has started with the purchasing team of each uh, uh, of each subsidiary and that will allow us to uh, establish a new uh, methodology to assess our uh, CO2 emission uh, um, position so once this work has been done we'll be able to, be able to use this information to be able to, to transfer that to our other subsidiaries uh, we'll all be able to work on this uh, CO2 emission uh, problem the, the carbon footprint of Thermador Group is very it's, it's very closely linked to the products that we sell of course 10% 10 
mostly sorry linked to the products that we uh, sell so we're going to work with our partners with our suppliers partners to see how we can reduce our carbon footprint so it's obviously it's going to take a lot of resources in the subsidiaries to help them to steer this project themselves and it will allow us to uh, answer questions that demands from our investors and stakeholders to be able to have a, uh, an audit a very comprehensive audit uh, on our uh, carbon footprint medium and long term and a last word about uh, the health crisis before going on to your questions everybody knows very well that this uh, health crisis is not quite finished but we're ready to confront any situation as we've shown in the past uh, a, a little word to say that all the groups uh, corporate offices are vaccinated and uh, to help them to ensure that they in the best possible uh, uh, situation to be able to to attack uh, the markets again in september and that allows me to answer the first question from claude who's on the chat of the webinar claude Asked if we've if we've incentivized our employees to get vaccinated. Okay, we would never obviously force people to do that. But as uh, an, uh, a C of the company, I tried to show an, I should just give the set an example. Uh, vaccination is not dangerous. I've been uh, vaccinated with the AstraZeneca, which is for people over fifty-five, I think, and I'm still alive. So. We try to keep the the lid on this. Fund, the lid on. We try to reduce anxiety amongst our employees by talking about it. But over the most recent days, we've had some positive cases of people who are not vaccinated. So we need to remain vigilant, and we need to take advantage of the fact that we're in a country uh, where it's quite easy to get vaccinated. Another question, the ranking of Thermador Group in the carrier rating. So we haven't answered the question yet for that. That's um, our holiday work. So we haven't got that uh, ranking yet. The Gaia index allows us to to answer questions about governance, uh, employment, uh, environment, and that allows us to rank us uh, compared to our peers in the distribution uh, market and uh, in terms of SMEs. So our ranking has improved, has improved over time. Uh, our drop, our score has dropped a little bit over the last two or three years, and Gaia are looking for actions for, uh, from our side to improve our position. So we've heard those messages. So it concerns our suppliers about having uh, responsible purchasing charters. That's an example of a subject that we're going to have to work on, and we've started to to work on during the first half of this year. And the other CSR platforms, corporate social responsibility, have given us good scores on the employment side, the social side. We'd already we've already had some feedback on that. So, so why do you, so why is, is this take not, into, not taken into account in your valuation? So the analysts who look at our uh, share, they are, they are obviously financial analysts, but we're seeing also extra non-financial uh, uh, analyses, and they are asking those sorts of questions. So it, it remains. 
increasing in terms of institutional investors. Uh, this, these questions, these non-financial questions are coming up. And the employees too ask us those questions. What are our commitments to the environment, to social questions? So everybody's aware of it. So we can, what we're doing, what we're working on at the moment with the carbon footprint, that's to do with that as well. Something we started in 2017, which showed us the our contribution and the pro our product life cycle was the biggest problem in terms of the contribution to our carbon footprint. We want to have a methodology. We want to develop it with our operational uh, staff so that once we've assessed a product, we can identify improvement actions that can be made to improve our carbon footprint. So it would be our uh, purchasing teams whose awareness needs to be raised, of course, uh, to help us to reduce our carbon footprint. So we want to be able to control and understand these things. And so we we need a clear methodology. And investment investors ask for very precise, uh, precise figures. Jean-Loup asked the question. Who's looking, looking at the list of uh, subsidiaries? Uh, he's talking about Accelera, who, who've got a range of uh, mobile uh, air conditioning units, and we've not been able to uh, sell any of those this year because the weather has been so poor. So they've not been helped by that. And we hope for better things in the future when there's a lot of rain uh, and not much heat. Of course, we don't sell many mobile uh, air conditioning units. However, what we do note with Accelere is that the ventilation products are showing very strong growth in the same in the same proportions as the subsidiary of the group. Sodico is the uh, company that uh, Jean-Louis is looking at. So last year, uh, Sodico had a big uh, project which delivered in the first uh, half year. And, and the, there is growth, but uh, Sodico's growth to the end of uh, to the end of July of June 2030. Uh, is is pretty good because we can't well, at the moment get in we cannot uh, sign these sorts of projects big projects that were signed at the beginning of 2020 so we need to be able to visit of course uh, sites uh, in order to be able to to bid for new projects so I don't think there's any link with uh, difficulties of, of sourcing whether it's uh, Accelère or Sodico. Question from Paul, no, uh, we know well. And Paul asks us whether the forecasts of Saint-Gobain for the second part of the year may correspond to Thermidor Group's uh, forecasts. The second part of the year is going to be more challenging, as our English friends say, because we've got, we're starting from a higher base. Note that Saint-Gobain, through its distribution uh, uh, division, had a great first year, first start of the year, sorry. Paul is, has another question concerning the renovation and construction. What about the DIY market? So is, is it linked to the increase in uh, leisure activities? And you'll see on the slides, yeah, that the drop in activity uh, coincided 
with the the end of the lockdown. So particularly for Megafair and Domac, they we're comparing it with very 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 high levels in May and June last year, 2020. And obviously, we now know that once now French people can can uh, spend money on their leisure, uh, so travel and restaurants and cinemas. Well, they will do that, and obviously to the detriment of DIY. So yeah, Paul asks also what proportion of the growth is linked to gains in market share. It's a bit difficult to say, but uh, we we can see the increase in the if we compare it to the FNAS index. It's clear that the growth of uh, of the group is higher than the industry uh, indices through the quality of our products, the work of our employees, their commitment. Uh, that would suggest that we've obviously gained market share because we're ahead of the market, but it's very difficult to assess because uh, now we need to obviously uh, get buy-in from these new customers and this new market uh, share that we've uh, grabbed. Another question from Pierre. What was the impact of the difficulties of, of sourcing? So, of, put, of customers bought product to to offset the price rises. Yeah, we've had very high, high levels of purchasing. Uh, given the shortage of products, we've sometimes had to arbitrate, and we've did what we do what we could to distribute between the different uh, customers. So yes, there has been precautionary uh, purchasing. So whether there's going to be a discrepancy between the first half and the second half because of problems of sourcing. Uh, what we can say is that we delivered perhaps in in portions rather than delivering full uh, orders. So as soon as we, we got delivered, we were able to deliver our customers. But I don't think there's, there's any difference between the first half and second half. I, I don't think that's the case. A lot of our customers are facing an overheating economy. And we know that they got work for a few months to come, so, so there'll be no uh, catch-up uh, on business that has not been able to, to to be done in the first half. I don't think it'll be in the second year. It'll take longer. Claude also asks about the new private shareholders uh, coming to Thermidor Group. Yeah, we've, we've seen in the figures. We've got more in private shareholders. And the next photo uh, in November or December, when we'll be giving our results. And we do this um, uh, investor survey. Uh, for those who've got more than one sh one share or more. And so we'll have new figures to give you in November, December. And we'll give you those when we publish the 2021 results. So we'll see whether or not we've got more uh, private shareholders uh, during this period. I think we've been through all the questions. Is anybody... Anybody wants to ask any more questions? It's 6.50 p.m. We've been together for 40 minutes because we had about 10 minutes of uh, technical problems. Any other questions you would like to ask on the chat? Okay, I'm not seeing any new questions. So, yeah, I see something's being written. We just wait a few seconds and then we'll close. So, upcoming events, maybe, for institutional investors. We've got a meeting in Paris, which will be in person. That'll be in September. And then we'll have the uh, publication of turnover in mid-October. 
and the actionaria show uh, and investor day those are two operations that we'll be involved in where we'll be able to uh, meet up our, with our private shareholders and as Pradesh and I are both double vaccinated we'll be able to go physically to these uh, shows and uh, meet the shareholders who, who are uh, prepared to come and see us. It's great to see see you in person. Last, uh, let's look at the questions, and then um, I think we'll close. So, thank you for your uh, loyalty. Sorry about the little technical problems we had at the beginning, and uh, we'd like to wish you a, a, a peaceful uh, August and happy holidays. Have a great holiday. Good evening.